cosmopolitan cities of the ancient world, Alexandria supplanted even Athens as the most important Greek city in history. Egyptian obelisks were highly prized by Roman architects. While Roman design previously favored the use of a single monument, Egyptian obelisks tended to come in pairs and were generally located at the entrance of temples. Several ancient Egyptian obelisks are still in existence today, though many are spread out across the world in locations such as Paris, Rome, New York, and London. All of this shows that Alexandria was significantly influenced by the rich past of Egypt. Alexandria had several main streets. Its most famous artery was the Canopic Way. It was lined with sumptuous buildings, houses, another. and temples, and was roughly My eight word, kilometers in world. length. This street was one of the Not most important people. shipping entrances My to people. Alexandria, and often hosted processions and festivals. I only speak English, nigga. You only speak English. Yeah, somebody tried to talk to me in a language. The width of the street, 30 meters, was abnormally large even by Greek standards. This is likely because the Canopic Way was made in a short span of time and based on an urban plan, as opposed to being slowly built over time, as was usual for the era. Heard about you out here on the block. The guy only speaking, as I told you. The Canopic Way originated in the Western if Cemeteries, you told that man that skirted and the gymnasium, and then exited the city to head east through massive doorways Low towards key. Lucky I'm a guest in this town. I don't want to start no shit. This structure was known as the Canopic Door. I don't know. You need to um just go relax today, bro. Like I don't know. I know they got some massage parlors out there. <laughs> Is it um Anton coming over today anyway? Yeah, just to let her know what, you know, about your phone situation, man. Welcome to the Siege of Alexandria. Among the collection of writings attributed to Julius Caesar are his descriptions of the Siege of Alexandria, the Gallic Wars, and the commentaries on the Civil War. These archives contain information on different campaigns, the wars of Alexandria, Africa, and Spain. Each of them recounts Caesar's military activity from 58 BCE to 45 BCE. Though Caesar's documents remain a main source of information, 
It's important to note that the perspective is limited. It is necessary for other historical documents to be taken into consideration to provide a better understanding of events. Mm -hmm. The siege of Alexandria closely relays the events of the Civil War that led up to the event and describes how Caesar was besieged in the palace of the Ptolemies. Other ancient authors have left equally valuable and sometimes contradictory information. In the events leading up to the siege of Alexandria, Cleopatra VII and her brother were fighting over control of Egypt. Young King Ptolemy XIII's regent, Pothinus, had firm control over the young pharaoh, and an outmaneuvered Cleopatra soon went into hiding. This set the stage for Pompey's arrival in Alexandria. Having lost his battle against Caesar in 48 BCE, the Roman general turned to his allies, the Egyptians, for safe harbor. But on the advice of Pothinus, Ptolemy XIII had Pompey assassinated in the hopes of earning Caesar's favor. This would turn out to be a most unfortunate decision. Upon his arrival in Alexandria, Caesar was presented with Pompey's head. The sight of a Roman murdered by Egyptians did not sit well with him. Caesar made his displeasure clear, ordering the return of Cleopatra and for the siblings to resolve their differences and resume their co-rule of Egypt as per the will of their father. Neither Pothinus nor Ptolemy XIII wished to accede to this demand. While doing his best to aggravate Caesar, Pothinus secretly plotted against the Roman ruler and sent word for Egyptian general Achilles to bring his 20,000 men to fight on his behalf. While Pothinus plotted against Caesar, Cleopatra made a bold move. <laughs> That's the big old mama. Oh, sorry. Big enough. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. 
Saturday is supposed to start. But, you know, today's going to be a day of cleansing. Negative shit out of our lives. Nigga out here running around with LCD. I don't know. Whoa. Bitch is stupid. She meant LSD. Whoa. Uh, there are various descriptions of the encounter between like acid, Caesar and too. Cleopatra. Yeah, like hallucinogenic drugs. One report states that she snuck into the palace alone at night. Another account claims she was accompanied by an ally and was brought inside the palace wrapped like, in a carpet what? bag. Though exactly what like happened where? at this fateful meeting is up for debate, what is you known is that Cleopatra sample? met with Caesar and earned sample. his approval. He really has Pothinus and Ptolemy XIII were most vexed with this turn of events. That's really where we're taking. Hey, look, I'm getting ready to roll up right now. Hey. With Cleopatra finally present, Caesar chose to act as mediator between the siblings in the hopes of a peaceful resolution. It did not take long for things to sour. During a banquet given to celebrate the reconciliation, there was an assassination attempt on Caesar. It was the Roman leader's own barber who thwarted the attack. I know, all that wolf and Once it was revealed that the king's regent, Pothinus, that? had ordered Ugh. the attack, Caesar had him executed. <laughs> He then placed the young king under guard. <laughs> you just like the police. No, nah, you need to come to the front of the congregation for a second, baby. Need to know where her bread is buttered at, nigga. The fuck? Oh yeah. But I'm not going in the wreck. I'm on this Assassin's Creed right now. This shit fine. Yes, sir. This shit's super fire. Mm -hmm. I didn't know this shit was this fire. Caught within the palace with roughly 4,000 troops and with the knowledge that the arrival of enemy forces was imminent, Caesar sent for help from Syria, Rhodes, and Cilicia. He ordered his men to dig a ditch around the palace and build a wall leading to the harbor. This would ensure Caesar's this access to the sea. When Egyptian general Achilles arrived in the city with 20,000 men, the battle for Alexandria began. I'm gonna pull up one nigga, bring two nigga, two nigga, and pull. I'm gonna get in over 20,000. That's your gate knocking at your door. Oh, 
With so few men at his disposal, <laughs> Caesar could not that risk the battle the just yet. He sent ambassadors to Achilles in the name of Ptolemy to propose a truce. <laughs> Knowing that the orders did not come from the young king and angered by the pharaoh's imprisonment, Achilles had the messengers assassinated. With Caesar hey, confined what do you guys within mean? the palace, you not hear what Achilles I said? positioned she his broke troops the around the city. I told all that. I Skirmishes don't. broke out throughout the streets of Alexandria and went on for several days and nights. Though they were outnumbered, Caesar's men were able to hold the enemy back. This prompted Achilles' next move, capture the Roman fleet stationed in the harbor. Nobody throwing no punches. Niggas is over there arguing like bitches. Now, thank God he didn't, man. Look, the way LA works, the law. No, I'm talking about the these. Uh, what's the name? These people in the game. Oh, I'm like, crowd just nigga. arguing with each other. The way them yeah, police was acting right now, this nigga would have been in yeah, jail. I was, I was, I was role playing time. I ran past the crowd. I was letting them know they're little bitches because ain't nobody throwing no hands. That's all. That's all right. <laughs> Cause they know they, they knew what the law about. was, but like they was tapping for the bitches. Like they now know this how is part bitches in the head where uh, the people thought Caesar did some bullshit. So they in the middle of the street arguing because they think Caesar did some bullshit. But when they uh when she when he let Cleopatra in the in the hood, so they was in the street arguing. And I just ran past them and said, "Y'all niggas ain't gonna do nothing. Y'all niggas shit in the argument like bitches." No, them niggas, niggas wanna punch. them niggas wanna fuck. That's why them niggas be. Find me and go uh, holler at her around the corner. Like, fuck you. Go holler at her when she's in lockup, nigga. You got okay, some real game, you can get her in there. Nigga. Right. Right. Yo, move your fucking horse while I slap. Oh, lucky I can't hit people yet. Although the palace offered protection, losing the port meant the end of help and supplies. Caesar knew he Damn, had to protect fucked this the port. Fleet. Up. While he and his troops succeeded in regaining control of the port, he knew it would be impossible to sustain. Caesar ordered the burning of the ships. With passage back to the palace closed off, he headed for the lighthouse of Alexandria. And right, we headed to the lighthouse. All right, Richie, let me know. Let me know what's up, nigga. I already got my glass of wine. Oh, niggas, niggas is matching on. Hold on, I got y'all. I'm about to match up right now, too. Oh, yeah, Fighting their way through the Egyptian troops, Caesar and his men eventually reached Ferris Island. There, they took oh, refuge damn. within the lighthouse. With easy man, let's access to the open sea, Caesar <laughs> well, was man, able so... to send messages to his you allies sure requesting reinforcements up. and more supplies. The island fort also allowed him to control access to the harbor by relying on the chains used by the Egyptians to nah, control ship traffic do it. to and from Alexandria's docks. Don't you want to do it. Please no. don't do it. I'm just saying Dana. Dana, right. Dana, Dana. The exact chronology of events during the war right. in Alexandria Get a girl that remain you don't imprecise. Really like. Conflicting accounts raise questions as to when so even and if even the if loses, the Great Library of Alexandria was burned down at all. One account states that during the fighting, docks and warehouses were burned, and this was the fire that spread to the library. In another account, when Achilles cut off the harbor, Caesar had to leave the safety of the palace to defend his ships. As the enemies battled across the port, their arsenals set ships ablaze, and this destruction spread to the library. In either case, the Great Library was not completely destroyed. Experts point out that its location was too far from the harbor, and much later texts refer to the Great Library as being intact. Warehouses near the harbor contained manuscript copies awaiting export, and it is more likely that these documents were destroyed than the Great Library itself.
The destruction of the Great Library may have been due to a number of fires over the ages. Its end was probably closer to the 4th no, you century CE have. You been when jail, the Christian maybe. Emperor Theodosius the I ordered the closure of all pagan temples. While some documents survived after being moved away, it remains unclear just what knowledge may have been lost. Where there are accounts of Achilles being in control of the battle against Caesar, yeah. it appears really? that instead Cleopatra's sister, siding with her brother, had him killed and put her ally Ganymedes in his place. Ganymedes proved oh. a valuable tactician for the Egyptian side. It was his idea to cut Caesar's access to the harbor, thus trapping Caesar at the palace. They never stood a chance. During the time of Ptolemy I, canals had been dug throughout Alexandria to provide fresh water. Ganymedes had his men take control of these canals. Black people After too isolating their own maybe. water supply, he had his men pour like, salt look, water into the canals and cisterns. We, that led to we didn't do camp. nothing. Black people didn't do nothing. That was your Spanish fly. That was your Spanish fly that did that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, we ain't doing that. J Lo did that. Uh, yeah, she had enough. Okay. <laughs> Panic erupted in Caesar's men. They wouldn't last long without fresh water. Recognizing that the porous limestone could help them, Caesar and his men dug wells to restore their water supply. Days later, the 37th Legion, comprised of Pompey's soldiers, arrived by ship. Unable to come ashore due to the winds, Caesar risked going out to meet them on the peninsula, Cape Chersonese. When the enemy learned Caesar's location, they rushed to intercept. Despite an obvious advantage for the Alexandrians, Caesar, with a Rhodian ship full of skillful sailors, emerged victorious. With help from the Allied ships, Caesar's victory enabled him to push the Egyptians back and secure the lighthouse. Gaining control of Ferris Island sent the Alexandrians into the sea and swimming back to the city. However, Caesar's fortification of the island didn't last long. The enemy regrouped and were set to storm the island. Panic-stricken, in spite of Caesar's encouragement, many of his men then fled their posts either by ship or jumping into the sea. Oh, 
Hold oh, on, give me two more minutes, give brother, two more minutes. Six minutes, yeah. Slim Shady, you're on. I'm in the middle of this tournament. I'm about to. Uh, Besides this being a good game, this is a good history lesson as well. It's two for one. Yes, yeah, sir. You know what I mean? I'm a nigga that love coupons. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I got a bird. That's fine. I got a bird as a pet. Tell it to my mama bird. My mama bird. Mm -hmm. Assassin's Creed got my mama bird. My mama bird. Alrighty, ladies and gentlemen, we can spark the pee. Time to spark the pee. Chicken wings, chicken wings, chicken and macaroni. <laughs> Caesar attempted to retreat, but Port Eunostos's harbor was overrun with enemy ships, preventing escape. Reportedly, Caesar gathered his papers and leapt overboard in an attempt to swim to an allied ship farther out. Historian Cassius Dio claimed that Caesar would have drowned if he hadn't been able to remove his purple garment. Still, he managed okay, to here. swim the distance and survive. The Alexandrians recovered the cloak and used it as a trophy to commemorate the Roman debacle. Unhappy with Ganymedes and wanting their king restored, the Alexandrians approached Caesar with a compromise. Caesar agreed to release Ptolemy XIII after entreating him to spare the kingdom and remain loyal to Rome. Once freed, however, the king defied the agreement and continued the war. Oh, that nigga lied. <coughs> Okay, you 
you a bum ass horse. By this time, a faithful ally of Caesar's, Mithridates, arrived in Egypt, clashing with Ptolemy's troops at Pelusium. Outnumbering the enemy, Mithridates secured the region between Pelusium and Alexandria. Ptolemy, warned Fuck of Caesar's enemy. ally marching on Alexandria, sent his troops to prevent passage over the river. That's crazy. Take over, sit the people over the river. That's fine. What else? Let's find out. Mithridates warned Caesar in time, and the two groups confronted the armies of Ptolemy in the Delta. Oh, so he got word. In the Battle the of the Nile, the out. Romans gained the upper hand, mm -hmm. sending the Egyptians fleeing. Yes, we won. In the tumult and panic, King Ptolemy the Thirteenth drowned in the Nile. Okay, if y'all knock down my red wine, it's gonna be an issue. And we still got two more hours. I don't want to rest up. I just want to get my fucking prize and leave this fight. Shit. I do too. Oh shit. After the siege ended, Cleopatra VII married her younger brother, Ptolemy XIV, enabling her to reign over Egypt until 30 BCE. Under her rule, Alexandria settled into its position within the Roman Empire and eventually surpassed Athens as one of the most important cities in the Roman Empire. Julius Caesar remained in Egypt for a short time. He and Cleopatra would later have a son named Caesarion. Hey, did y'all ever see that Dr. Phil episode with the they and them conversation? Nope. Uh, 
they had this whole transsexual couple on there. And they were trying to explain it. And like, they were trying to make it like normalize it and all of this other shit. And you had this other dude who was like strongly against it. And he was like, y'all are defensive about it. Welcome like, to why you. Why are you all this? Or, you Queen know, of Egypt. You want me to lie to you and keep up the lie? Cleopatra the no. VII, Theophilipator, ascended and the like, throne in 51 the points this BCE nigga was saying, at the age of 18. Even though the delivery was kind of Though her early off? attempts to maintain power were Dude, often challenged, right. she eventually prevailed and became the sole ruler of Egypt. Kind of According to Plutarch, she was the only Ptolemaic pharaoh to speak the Egyptian language. Her intelligence, coupled with a good education mm. and a great political mind, allowed her to make the alliances necessary to maintain the independence of Egypt while Rome was becoming a Mediterranean Dude. empire. Must have been a super throwback. Like the feeling being on TV. Well, is he still on TV? I think so. I mean, the they them conversation can't be that old, could it? Nah, they've been trying for a minute. It's just uh, one of the more is a forgot. It is important to understand that Cleopatra's crazy, the knowledge of Egyptian language to a girl. and keen understanding of the culture he allowed still her got to his make powerful beard. ideological like references that hair. resonated with ancient Egyptians. But dressed like a bitch, got hair By like a bitch, crossed his legs with like the a goddess bitch, Isid, like, the divine mother, great of magic, like a bitch with and repository hair. of divine a essence, lot. Cleopatra firmly established herself as the protector of the two lands and legitimized her place on the throne. <coughs> Oh, you got the Rick Rubin and the bang. <laughs> you got the Rick Rubin and the bang. <laughs> Upon his death yeah. in 51 BCE, Ptolemy <laughs> XII Aras bequeathed his kingdom to his daughter and it's eldest son, tripping. Cleopatra VII and Ptolemy XIII. <laughs> As was custom, the siblings were married. The new pharaoh was 10 years old. His sister was 17. There? The early years of their reign were not easy. Wait, what? Between 50 and 48 BCE, droughts and there. floods aggravated nah. Egypt's problems. Right, General Achilles and the royal advisor Pothinos kept intervening in the young man's political night. decisions and eventually colluded to turn Ptolemy XIII against Cleopatra. By 48 BCE, Cleopatra was in exile. Ew, how this shit, though. <laughs> During Cleopatra's exile, right now, the Roman right? Empire was not without its own internal Almost conflict. Caesar and Pompey were at war with one another. And after his defeat in 48 BCE, Pompey fled to Alexandria in the hope of finding refuge. This turned out to be an unwise decision. Listening to his advisors, Ptolemy XIII elected to have Pompey assassinated, his head kept as a gift in the hopes of acquiring Caesar's favor. This gambit backfired. Instead of earning approval, the murder of a Roman greatly angered Caesar. Cleopatra, aware of Caesar's anger against Ptolemy for the murder of Pompey, decided to take advantage of the situation. She returned to Egypt in secret, hoping to establish an alliance with one of the most powerful men of the time. Um. Outside of the legend, where she had herself smuggled into his quarters in a carpet, what exactly happened during that fateful meeting remains a mystery. However, Caesar seemed to see a better ruler for Egypt in Cleopatra than in her young and too easily influenced brother. Invoking Ptolemy XII's will, Caesar attempted to mediate peace between the siblings. Ptolemy XIII was enraged by the turn of events, and his advisors were none too happy to see Cleopatra return. 
Urged on by General Achilles and Pothinos, the young pharaoh plotted against Caesar and Cleopatra, resulting in the siege of Alexandria in 47 BCE. It was in March 47 BCE that Caesar defeated Ptolemy XIII's forces. The young pharaoh drowned in the Nile after having fled Can I just my Xbox up to my laptop? With her opponents dead or powerless, mm -hmm. Cleopatra married her other much Can younger brother, my Xbox Ptolemy my laptop? XIV, mm -hmm. and finally claimed the throne of Egypt for good. The end of the Alexandrian War also cemented the romantic and political alliance between Cleopatra no, but I'm and saying Caesar. Anybody just hooked the HDMI up to it. In June of 47 BCE, Cleopatra gave birth to a son, whom she called Caesarian. Caesar did not accept the boy as his heir, choosing instead his nephew Octavian. Nonetheless, on his return to Rome, Caesar invited the queen and her brother husband to stay the in the TV, city. But her presence still drew much hard. disapproval I'm wondering from the if Senate. I do it on the other side. Always a strategist, if it Caesar will, um, left four legions in Egypt and a man he trusted to picture. direct Egyptian affairs, giving him control of the wheat supplies essential to Rome. Cleopatra and her entourage remained in Rome until March 44 BCE, when Caesar was murdered. <laughs> No, I'm, I I get that. It's easier like that, but like I don't have a cloud feature for it. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm saying. That's all I wanted for. Caesar's most faithful ally, Mark Antony often visited the Queen of Egypt during his stay in Rome. Unlike uh, most, he recognized the legitimacy of Caesarian, yeah, like. the natural son of Caesar. Antony knew he would need the riches of Egypt in order to fight Octavian and claim the Roman Empire. Right, Cleopatra, right. in return, saw a powerful ally. In the winter of 41 BCE, she arranged a sumptuous tour of Egypt by boat to show Antony the wealth of her country and the power she held as its ruler. A romantic and political relationship followed. The Roman right Senate there. was once again most displeased. To calm spirits in Rome, Antony married Octavia, sister of Octavian. <clears throat> Despite his marriage to Octavia, Antony remained Cleopatra's lover, and she gave birth to their children. Cleopatra increased her kingdom's territory and started a political propaganda alongside her lover in Egypt and beyond. She hoped to create a Ptolemaic federal empire with Alexandria at its center. Antony eventually repudiated his Roman wife for the Egyptian queen, much to the dismay of the Roman elite. However, while Mark Antony focused on Egypt, Octavian carefully gained military and political ascendancy over him in Rome. Octavian managed his own propaganda campaign and succeeded. The Roman people hated Mark Antony and Cleopatra. To avoid the censure still inherent in attacking a fellow Roman, Octavian simply declared war against Egypt. Rome's power still reigned supreme. The powerful Egyptian fleet, led by Cleopatra as well as Mark Antony's forces, were defeated in 31 BCE in Actium. Octavian arrived in Egypt in 30 BCE to formalize his victory.
The following events remain difficult to confirm due to the many versions and legends around them. It is believed that after hearing a rumor about Cleopatra's suicide, Mark Antony committed suicide himself. He was brought to the Queen as he slowly passed away. Knowing that Octavian would have her chained and paraded through Rome in defeat, Cleopatra planned her own suicide. She most likely killed herself with arsenic, though admittedly the version where she uses an asp to deliver a fatal bite may be considered more dramatic. What happened to the body of Cleopatra is still a mystery. Welcome to the Greek Pharaohs. Let's learn about the Greek Pharaohs. Easy. <clears throat> Pharaohs were considered divine incarnations of the gods. As an avatar of the gods living on Earth, the Pharaoh's role was to preserve fundamental values and universal harmony by removing chaos, easefet, and ensure that justice, mot, prevailed. The Pharaoh, by divine ancestry and through multiple offerings, was the bond that unites the world of men to the world of the gods and allows the maintenance of the cosmic order. The Ptolemaic dynasty reigned over Egypt from 305 BCE to 30 BCE. The dynasty was called the Ptolemies of the Lagids, in recognition of the founder of the dynasty, Ptolemy Lagos, a Greek general and close friend of Alexander the Great. While Macedonian, Ptolemy Lagos understood that to be accepted by the Egyptian people, he would have to adopt their traditions. Upon assuming the title of Pharaoh, he changed his name to Ptolemy I Soter, meaning savior. Born in 356 BCE, Alexander the Great went through a hasty education in the affairs of the kingdom before integrating into the Macedonian army, where he quickly rose through the ranks. After his father's assassination in 336 BCE, which some believed was orchestrated by Alexander himself, he became king of Macedonia. Ruler of a unified kingdom and leader of a large army, Alexander set his sights on conquest. Eager to reclaim the Greek cities of Asia Minor, he took on the Persian forces, 
earning victory after victory. Ever victorious, Alexander the Great marched on, laying siege to city after city until he reached Egypt, where the Persians were defeated yet again. Viewed as a liberator by the Egyptian people, Alexander decided to become Pharaoh in due form. He traveled to Thebes to make a sacrifice to Apis, then went to the oasis of Siwa, where he was proclaimed son of Amun. Officially Pharaoh of Egypt, Alexander spent much of the winter there and founded the city of Alexandria. Perhaps not coincidentally, being pharaoh allowed Alexander to spread propaganda to prepare further conquests. He resumed his military campaigns in 331 BCE. On his deathbed in 323 BCE, Alexander yeah, the Great yeah, gifted yeah. the satrapy of Egypt to Ptolemy Lagos. Perfectly aware of the value yeah. of Egypt, Ptolemy ensured not only the stability of the country's borders, but also its economic and military development. At the same time, he worked with the Egyptian elite to maintain the internal order of the country. By 305 BCE, Ptolemy, well respected both in Egypt and in the Mediterranean, was at the head of the largest fleet of the Hellenistic world. Ptolemy officially took the title of Pharaoh of Egypt in January 304 BCE, on the anniversary of Alexander the Great's death. Alexander died in Babylon in 323 BCE. His remains were placed first in a solid gold sarcophagus and then within another. The casket was carried in an ornate custom wagon, gilded and set with precious stones, and pulled by 64 mules crowned with gold. The funeral procession was diverted to a grandiose temple in Alexandria, built in the conqueror's honor under the orders of Ptolemy I. Julius Caesar visited Alexander's tomb at the capture of Alexandria, and the Roman Emperor Augustus reportedly placed flowers there. However, though many powerful leaders claim to have visited it, the tomb's location has gone missing from history. Some accounts do state that the golden coffin was replaced by a glass sarcophagus, probably by Ptolemy X. It is also implied that Cleopatra may have plundered the tomb in a time of financial crisis. Easy. Yes. Yeah. I finished that one. Uh. You know what? 